Joining me now is Congressman Stephen Horsford, a Democrat and the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Congressman, thank you for joining us tonight. Donald Trump has cast himself as the law and order candidate in 2016, and he's carried that message into his 2024 campaign, even as he faces multiple felony criminal trials, one of which just handed down a 34-count guilty verdict. Yet every time the law has been applied to him, he's railed against it as a rigged or a witch hunt or evidence of a two-tiered justice system. Now he and his allies are trying to use his felony convictions to endear himself to black voters. Take a listen to Eric Trump this morning. He's the victim that oftentimes some of their communities were. And, um, and you see them swing. You look at the African-American yeah. vote, right? That's swinging over to Donald Trump in spades. Now, now when I hear that, I'm offended. Uh, and not only because it's uh, playing into a unfair stereotype. He's never taken that position in New York. I'm a New Yorker as he is. And he, in fact, the only time he took a position on a case, he called for the death penalty of the Central Park Five. One of them were on this show last night and called for them to have the death penalty. Are you offended in members of the Black Caucus that he would try to appeal to the black community using this stereotype? Yes, and Donald Trump is anything but uh, law and order. Uh, he is a direct threat to the American people, to black America specifically. Uh, by contrast, you know, President Biden and Vice President Harris are focused on delivering for the American people. Sadly, uh, former President Trump does not want to accept the results of 12 jurors. These are U.S. citizens who are doing their duty to participate in a fair and impartial trial. They are the ones who made this ruling and who convicted him on the 34 counts. Not President Biden, not the Department of Justice, but a jury of his peers. And most of the witnesses were people that had worked for Donald Trump. But let's stay with black voters for a while. You joined President Biden and Vice President Harris last week in Philadelphia at the 2024 campaign event targeting black voters. The Biden campaign is aggressively trying to show up black support ahead of November and say what they, in fact, have done for blacks, because a lot of blacks saying, what have we gotten done? That's what Trump is pushing out. Now, as polls have shown Trump leading in several swing states where that support could be vital for Biden's success, what would you say should be the message to black voters or voters in general? I know you've been doing barbershop kind of town halls. Uh, what, is, what should the message be uh, to blacks who are still on the fence about supporting President Biden? Well, look, you have a clear contrast between President Biden, who cares about you and your family, or former President Trump, who only cares about himself. Under President Biden and Vice President Harris, we've seen record unemployment for black America. We have seen uh, the lifting of 50 percent of children out of poverty through the child tax credit. The check that so many black people uh, talk about receiving, that check was passed by Democrats in Congress led by the Congressional Black Caucus, in right. fact. Uh, we've seen 16 million new businesses started, a historic number over th uh, number of black-owned businesses started in 30 years, the largest number, led by black women entrepreneurs. Now, going forward, it absolutely has to be centered on black economic prosperity and wealth. That is a big part of what I uh, had the opportunity to talk to my constituents about at a barbershop talk in my district. I, I had about 60 black men talking about the issues that matter to them most, how we improve home ownership, access to capital for, for black owned businesses, how we improve uh, opportunities through skills training and apprenticeship for young men that are unemployed or out of school. Those are the issues that black men particularly want to, to talk about, how we can build up our community, not just tear them down, how we bring people together, not just tear them apart. That is the message that I think will help us win this November. In that barbershop discussion, were any of those black men saying they were for Donald Trump? You know what? In a two-hour conversation with nearly 60 black men, Donald Trump's name was not mentioned once. Mm. You know what was mentioned? 
how we can uh, improve home ownership. Right now in black America, 44% of us own homes compared to 72% of white America. Mm -hmm. They want to see policies that center improving the lives of black America and our stake in it. We understand that we have always helped to save our democracy, black women and black men. And we're going to do it again this November by reelecting Vice, uh, Vice President Harris and President Biden. Now, President Biden is planning to issue an executive order this week to curb migrant crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border. After all, but one Senate Republican um, Repro voted last month to filibuster, all but one, voted to filibuster a bipartisan border bill uh, at Donald Trump's request. So the border crisis would remain a political issue for his campaign, was Donald Trump's intent. Now, it follows the demise of a border bill that was painstakingly negotiated by Senate Democrats and Republicans early this year, which Republicans killed before a vote could even be held, again, at the request of Donald Trump. Your thoughts on this action Biden is taking to deal with the border crisis? Look, we have a real issue at the border. We have to recognize that I'm a group of, of members who have joined an organization called Democrats for Border Security, in large part because of the fentanyl crisis. Uh, of fentanyl, illegal fentanyl drugs that are coming through the border, not only by uh, migrants, but citizens. This is a serious problem. So I am pleased that the president is taking these steps. However, I believe that it needs to be a balanced approach that includes work permits uh, for spouses from mixed status families, as well as for DREAMers, for those who have benefited from the DACA program so that they can continue to have the protections that they need. But to, to ignore the problem like Republicans in the House of Representatives want to do, Speaker Johnson could have brought the Senate bill to the floor, but they don't want to solve a problem, right. Rev. They want to have a political issue, and they want to curry favor with Donald Trump more than solve a problem for the American people. And they don't even talk about Haiti or Sudan or any of the other uh, real, real problems around the world that need humanitarian aid. But let me go to this. Yesterday, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, accepted congressional leaders' invitation to address uh, both chambers at the U.S. Capitol. No date has been set. But the invite comes as political divisions continue to deepen in the U.S. over Israel's war in Gaza. Uh, on, on Friday, uh, President Biden laid out his proposal for a ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas, including hostage and prisoner release on both sides, and the reconstruction of Gaza. Now, I've been an open critic of Netanyahu, but I believe in a two-state solution. But what's your reaction uh, to Netanyahu coming to Washington and to the president's action on Gaza while Trump and the Republicans just talk? Well, first, I commend President Biden for laying out the three-phased approach towards peace uh, in the Middle East and to ensure that, first, we get the hostages out. Uh, that we end and have a permanent ceasefire, that we surge humanitarian aid to innocent uh, Palestinians who are in Gaza. Those are the steps that will achieve peace, long-lasting peace, so that we can work towards that two-state solution. But I find it ironic that uh, Speaker Johnson found the time to invite uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu when just last week, we had Pres President uh, Ruto from yeah. Kenya. Both and, of us were at the state dinner. And he and refused to allow uh, a head of state from Africa to uh, address a joint session of Congress. That would have been the first one in 20 years. So he can make time for this, but he couldn't make time uh, for an important ally for us. And, I support our leadership's decision to bring them but I hold Netanyahu accountable for how we can work towards peace. Well, he seems like he doesn't want to work toward peace because of his own legal problems. He's very similar to Donald Trump there. Uh, but uh, President uh, Ruto of, of Kenya was here four days. As I said, we were at a state dinner together with him. Clearly, he could have addressed the Congress. Johnson uh, backed, uh, really wouldn't back that. He blocked that. And, and, and this is an, an important 
country in, on the continent that is helping us from a national security standpoint, uh, pushing back on China uh, and Russia's influence on the continent. It was a missed opportunity. I commend uh, Leader Jeffries, uh, as well as President Biden, for extending uh, the offer for President Ruto to address us in, in other ways. All right. Thank you, Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Stephen Horsford.